Hello everyone and welcome to this Tech Tips video on the Microsoft Technical Trainer Community Channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about Azure regions and zones and also about the Azure global infrastructure a bit more broadly. I'm Angel Oliva. I'm a Microsoft Technical Trainer based out of Madrid, Spain, and I specialize mostly uh, within Azure infrastructure, security, and administration. Right? So before we go ahead and get started, let's go ahead and talk about the agenda for this session, which basically it just consists in two parts. First, we're just going to go through a whiteboard where we describe these concepts about um, geography, zones, regions, and perimeter sites. And then after that, uh, we'll go through a couple of demos to actually show these concepts um, in real life, right? All right. So without any further ado, let's get started here. So we can see that this is uh, my whiteboard, and the first concept we have to start off with is an Azure region, right? So let's talk about an Azure region. So an Azure region, um, I like to define it, and I think this is probably the best uh, possible definition, as is that it is a physical place on Earth, right? It's a physical location that within a two milliseconds latency boundary, right? We can see here within a two milliseconds latency boundary, which means that from any point within our Azure region to any other point in our Azure region, we're expecting about a two milliseconds maximum communication time, right? And it's a physical location where Azure infrastructure, right? The data centers, the servers, the hardware physically exists, right? And that's an Azure region. And we can see, for example, an example of a region is East US, Another example of a region is West US, right? When Microsoft builds out Azure regions and we put our data centers in these regions, right? Because remember that the region is a collection of physical infrastructure of physical data centers that are within this two milliseconds latency boundary, right? So when we build out these Azure regions, we like to build them out into geographies, right? And this is very important for a few reasons, uh, primarily right around uh, data residency, right, and also data sovereignty, because we want to make sure that our Azure regions are in are aligned to corresponding geographies for the purposes of data, you know, of a data residency and data sovereignty uh, to ensure that we're complying with local laws, right? So when Microsoft builds out these regions, we build typically, now this can change, it depends, there are exceptions, uh, but typically, we try to build out at least two Azure regions within a geography, right? And we can see examples of geographies. For example, the United States is a geography, Western Europe is a geography, and we have others that are also country specific, right? And the idea here is that we can expect that the that uh, similar laws and regulations are going to apply to regions that are within the same geography, right? So that we have that consistency, right? And then these regions, Right, the, these Azure regions where we have our physical infrastructure deployed actually have redundant network connections into this global network called the Microsoft Global WAN. Uh, and, and later on, we're going to see this in a map view. But this Microsoft Global WAN, it, you can think of it as this worldwide network that connects all of our Azure regions to all of our other Azure, all of our other Azure regions, plus to uh, external networks, right, to peered networks. Right, so we can see our Azure regions are connected to each other use it, you, uh, through this uh, global WAN network that is maintained by Microsoft worldwide, and then, and and sometimes you can also hear this referred to, uh, for example, as the Microsoft Backbone, right, as the Backbone network, right. That's also a, a common way to refer to this, right. And then on this Backbone network, we have what we can see here as perimeter sites, right? So these per perimeter sites, as we can see here, what they do is that they connect this Microsoft WAN and all of our regions, they actually connect them to partner and peered networks, right? So basically all of our internet service providers, right? All of our um, other, you know, big major internet companies that uh, we have peered in to our Microsoft uh, Global WAN, this, these are the exit and entrance points to our network. So if you're a customer that has private connectivity into Azure via Express Route, um, you're going through a perimeter site um, in which your connectivity partner is connected, and then Microsoft is also connected into this uh, perimeter site, right? So that's the idea around these. And we also and we have you know um, many of these worldwide 
And this, so if you think of the Microsoft Global WAN as kind of this massive highway network, right? The perimeter sites are kind of the on-ramps, right? The on-ramps and off-ramps or the acceleration lanes um, into this uh, global infrastructure. Okay, so then zooming in a little bit more, right? We can see that regions are generally split into something that we call zones, right? Availability zones. So we can see here that in East US, right? We have availability zone one, we have availability zone two, and we have availability zone three. Now, it's important to note that not all regions have availability zones. In fact, not all regions are equal, and we're gonna be talking about that in a minute. But it's important to mention that these availability zones right, are actually isolated sets of infrastructure within the region, within the two milliseconds latency boundary, right? So we can see here that, and, and this is just a, an example, this is hypothetical. Uh, this doesn't actually map to the way that East US is deployed in real life, but we can see here that I drew two data centers in each zone, and then I'm, uh, and then I'm just uh, supposing that us as a customer, that we as a customer, we, we have virtual machines and they're spread out across um, zones and the different data centers, right? Because this is kind of what happens when you start deploying across zones in a region, right? That your VMs will be spread, uh, you know, you can have your VMs uh, spread out across uh, these various availability zones. So availability zones are isolated in terms of they have their own heating, ventilation, and air conditioning infrastructure. They have redundant electric connections slash uh, generators, you know, in the case of a failure, right? They have redundant network connections. And oftentimes they're actually built at different elevations so that if one region, uh, or sorry, if one zone has a flood or something like that, right? It doesn't necessarily have to affect all the others, right? So this is a redundancy concept. And this is built into most Azure regions. Although keep in mind that not all Azure regions have zones, uh, but Microsoft has committed so, th so that every new region that we deploy around the world, and there are actually um, many regions that are under construction and are coming up soon. Um, all the new regions that we deploy will in fact utilize availability zones, but there are still some existing le legacy regions that do not um, have this type of integration yet. Or do not have this uh, availability zone technology yet. And also just, uh, and this is just a uh, kind of a, a point to clarify, but our virtual networks, right? The, this is our, our virtualized private address space where you deploy your VMs into so that they can have communication with each other. These virtual networks are actually scoped at the region level. So we can have virtual machines in different availability zones and different physical data centers, right? But um, the idea is that we can actually put them all in the same network and they can communicate with each other as if they were next to each other, right? Now we can see here that the latency target within a zone is 0 0.5 milliseconds, and then between zones, remember, is two milliseconds, right? So for example, the communication between this VM and this VM, we would expect that um, at around a latency target of 0 0.5 milliseconds, right? Uh, but then of course, across zones, then we'll, we'll go up to the regional latency target of about two milliseconds. Also, it's important to mention that our regions, right? Each region in Azure has a paired region. Now, this is not something that you can decide. This is something that is decided for you, right? But each region has a paired region, and this is just out of the box. Uh, there's documentation about this. Um, and these regions are paired for uh, data replication reasons, right? So let's say that you have uh, uh, data in Azure storage in East US, you can choose optionally at, a, at, a, at an additional cost, the ability to replicate that data over to uh, the paired region, right? Using globally redundant storage or GRS as we call it, right? Um, so every region has a paired region for the purposes of data replication and disaster recovery. And just uh, for you to have a, a, you know, for you to have a paired region as a secondary site, right? And then we, we can see here the example of West US, which uh, I just drew as having a similar type of configuration as East US, but East US and West US are in fact paired regions. And we do have documentation on this. So we can see here that if I go down, I actually, uh, th this is uh, straight from Microsoft documentation. We can see that every region in the world has a paired region, right? Uh, and we have them here organized by geography. But uh, as an example, 
right, we can see East US, like I mentioned, is paired with West US, right? And we see that um, West US two is paired with West Central US region, right? So we can see effectively that these are all the region pairs um, and these are uh, hard linked, right? So we can see also, for example, UK West with UK South, right? And these are our region pairs. Great. All right, so now moving on, we can see an, another representation. This is also from our documentation. If you want to see it represented in a different way, we can see here that, um, you know, this, um, so we can see that this kind of blue slate represents kind of that Microsoft wide area network, right? That, that global backbone. And then we see that this represents a region. And then we can see here that our availability zones have one or more data centers within them and they have diverse fiber paths that connect them. And uh, this is how we have our availability zones. And one thing about these is that we have to consider that these have a 99.99% SLA whenever you deploy um, more than one virtual machine across more than one availability zone. And also there are other services, not just virtual machines, that take advantage of availability zones and you can get a similar SLA. Because uh, remember, this is a, an important concept for high availability. And then we can see here the concept of the paired region where they pair this region to this region for disaster recovery purposes in this uh, graph, right? So that's just another way to visualize uh, the Azure global infrastructure, right? And then here's yet another way to visualize it. So we can see here that this is actually a flat map, but this actually puts into, into perspective the global scale of our Azure infrastructure, right? So we can see that all of these lines are actually the connective uh, fiber that that is connecting all of our Azure regions to each other. Uh, and then we can see that these kind of light blue dots represent our Azure region. So we could see that they are worldwide, in fact, in uh, North America, Europe, Asia, we have many regions. And then we can see that these gray, these uh, gray dots are the ones, are Azure regions that are coming up, that they're not currently, that they don't currently exist yet, but they're under construction, right? And that's the idea. Perfect. And then we can see that these little, um, these uh, little dark blue dots, these are actually our, per, our perimeter sites or edge locations, however you want to refer to them as. And these are those, those um, on ramps and off ramps, remember, where we connect with other networks, with other connectivity partners, connectivity providers. Um, so this is how we, so these are the sites in which we expose our global network to the world. Where we can have, where are the entrance and exit points of the communication between uh, the Azure infrastructure and other networks worldwide, right? Fantastic. And then just to highlight, remember I said that not all Azure regions are equal. So whenever you're deploying in Azure, you really do want to think well about the region, right? Because it does have a lot of implications. First of all, um, not every region. Um, is priced the same, right? So we can actually see significant differences between uh, the costs uh, of resources across Azure regions, because obviously the cost to deploy uh, hardware in one country may not be the same as the cost in another country. There could be various external uh, externalities, external factors that could be influencing the cost of a service, right? Also, not all Azure regions have the same availability of services. So a lot of times when, when Microsoft rolls out services in Azure, we actually do this as a gradual rollout, right? So you'll find that not all Azure regions have all Azure services or all uh, subtypes within a service, right? Also, there are certain resources that are more specialized and they're, they're served out of only more specific regions, right? Of course, a major consideration as well, beyond uh, price and availability of, of uh, services region by region, is the latency to your end user. So obviously, depending on where your end user is, they're going to experience more or less latency based on where, where that user is located physically in the, in the world. And then remember, not all Azure regions support availability zones. And availability zones are a best practice when you're trying to reach those enterprise level SLAs uh, to provide that type of um, high availability to your customers 
and your applications, right? So in that case, um, we, we would ideally want a region with availability zones. But really, um, you know, you as an Azure customer, you as a Microsoft customer, you have to balance these considerations and determine, you know, whether or not uh, it is, uh, you know, is worth sacrificing one of these for another um, when you're choosing your Azure region, right? So of course that's important. All right. And then lastly, let's do a little bit of a demo, right? So we can see here that this is the demo environment that I have, right? I have a deployment of a virtualized network in, in France central region, which is closer to me. Remember I'm in Madrid, Spain, so this is closer to me. Then I have another one in East US too, right? And then we can see these two networks are actually peered to each other over the Microsoft backbone. So that means that this network and this network actually see each other and are connected to each other. Um, and they basically are going to connect as if they were one big network, right? And this is happening all on our, all across our software defined network across that Azure backbone, right? And basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a couple of tests just to show this in action, right? So first, from my laptop in Madrid, uh, I'm going to do a ping test to each one of these. And I will also do a trace route so that we can actually so that we can actually see so we can actually see the the perimeter site in action, right? So we can see the traffic flow from from my computer to my router to my internet service provider through the perimeter site into the Microsoft network and talking to this virtual machine, right? So first we'll do some tests for my machine and then we'll actually RDP, we'll remote desktop into these machines and we'll have them communicate with each other because this Azure backbone is actually optimized for the fastest traffic possible um, using proprietary technology, right? So we'll be able to see the speed between these two regions that are quite far away because remember uh, one is in one is in France Central and the other is in East US too, right? And then at the end, I will go through a couple of the resources that we can compare these factors, right? Price and cost, availability of services, latency, um, and availability zones, right? Okay, so we can see here that I do have a, I do have a console here. And first, let's go ahead and ping the France uh, central region so we can see me as a customer in Madrid, Spain, if I ping this, you see I'm actually getting a pretty good latency, right? Uh, from Madrid to France, I'm getting 19 milliseconds, 18, 19 milliseconds roughly of latency with this, um, with this virtual machine that I have hosted there, right? Now, let's uh, do the same thing, but let's ping our, actually first let's, let's just do a little clear here so we could get it nice and clean. And then we'll do a ping of our virtual machine in the east coast of the United States, East US2 region. So then here, obviously, we see a much higher latency of 102 milliseconds from my local network to, to East US. So what does this mean? This means that if my company was hosting um, Azure services for customers that are in Spain or Europe, et cetera, you know, from a latency perspective, it would be better to build in France Central, right? From a latency perspective. Um, versus East US, we can see here, there's a significant difference in latency from 19 milliseconds to 102 milliseconds approximately, right? So that just shows those latency differences. But then um, what if we do this? What if we do a trace route? And this is a MTR is just another way to do a trace route. The only thing is that this one happens quicker, right? So let's do a trace route to my virtual machine in France Central and we'll see that this is my laptop, this is my router, and then these are intermediate networks um, that are from my internet service provider, right? We can see that those are th these are part of my ISP. And then we can see here, hop nine, this is actually my local um, perimeter site or edge location, where you can see that the traffic actually hands off from my internet service provider. So we see Microsoft, Madrid, et cetera, Telefonica Global Solutions. And then we can see the next hop is on the Microsoft network. And we know it's on the Microsoft network because we see this. Uh, so I believe this represents uh, Paris, France, right? .network, .msn .net. And whenever you see the .network, .msn .net, 
um, this is when when you know that you're on the Microsoft network, in my experience from these trace routes, right? So we can see that this is that global infrastructure in action. Um, and we can see that it, it it's always going to, well, by default, it will prioritize hopping onto the Microsoft network and using that optimized network uh, for communication as soon as possible, right? Now, it is possible um, to actually switch it to only use Microsoft networks um, at the last minute. Uh, this does save a, a small amount on costs, but it does uh, also make your latency uh, a bit worse, right? So that's like another consideration to keep in mind, right? Perfect. All right, so, that, so now that we've talked about that, um, let's go ahead and show off uh, a few more things here, right? So first, let's get let's open up our VM. So these are our two VMs, right? So the, so the one on the left side is the one in, in France Central, and the one on the right side is, is in East US too, right? So first, I'll do a ping. And we'll see that from France Central, so from France to East US 2, which is in Virginia, we're seeing an 81 milliseconds latency time, right? That is actually much uh, better than the 102 milliseconds I was getting from my location in Madrid to East US 2. So as we can see, this network, so, so this is actually uh, flowing over the backbone, right? So this machine in France is doing a ping to this machine in East US 2, and it's flowing over the Microsoft Backbone network, and we can see that we have an optimized performance when this is happening, right? Because we do see an 81 milliseconds of latency, something that's not possible from where I am, right? Uh, and I and I do actually have a fiber optic connection. I'm hardwired into it, right? So I've done everything on my side to get the possible the fastest possible latency, right? So we see that that backbone network is optimized. And also, since these two virtual networks uh, are actually peered to each other. If we do a trace route, right? If we do a trace route, we can see that it just makes one hop because these two networks are peered to each other. So it says, okay, I'm just gonna hop over to this machine because it sees it. So they're managed as two as two uh, separate resources, but um, from the software defined network uh, from the software defined network perspective, they're actually merged into um, kind of one big region, right? Great. And then lastly. Let's just show off a couple of things here, right? So first, let's look at our pricing calculator just to show that not all the Azure regions are priced the same, right? So we can see here we're looking at, yeah, we are looking at this D2 ASV5 instance. Um, and in this case, we're looking in East US. And we can see here that the price for this for a 730 hours per month, which is basically all month, we see the price for this is 62.78, right? Now, let's go ahead and switch this, or we could see it down here as well, right? Let's go ahead and switch this, remember 6278, let's go ahead and switch this to a different region. So I'll pick one that I'm pretty sure is going to be more expensive. Um, so let's pick Brazil South. In Brazil South, the same exact machine, we can see costs $100.74, right? Because remember I said there's a lot of externalities, there's a lot of external factors that influence the pricing. Right, so we do want to keep in mind that some regions are more expensive than other regions, right? And the Azure pricing calculator is a good way to find out, right? And then here's that global infrastructure map. I'll provide the link in the description if you're interested in seeing it. We do have a 3D version that you can actually uh, look through and read information um, about the different Azure regions. You see we have our region in Spain Central coming soon. We have, you know, our region in Switzerland North already deployed, etc. And you can actually see this uh, from a worldwide perspective, right? So we can actually see all the Azure infrastructure using this map. So really neat, useful tool. And lastly, we can use this page um, to actually compare the products available by region. So even if we look at a product that's available in all regions, right? So if I search for virtual machine, we can see here that virtual machines are available in all regions, but not all virtual machines are available everywhere. Right, so for example, um, let's look at, you know, let's look at this, um, yeah, so let, let me, yeah, so this DC ADS V5 machine. We see that it's not available in Canada Central, Canada East, Central US. It is available in East US. It's not available in East US too. It's not available here. It's not available here. It's not available here, but it is available here, right? So we can, so we should generally check 
this page just to make sure that the service that we want to use is actually available in the region that we want to use it, right? And I think with that, we've gone through all the different considerations. Remember, they vary on price, they vary on availability of services, they vary on availability zones, right? And they vary by latency and the latency that you can experience, right? So with that, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Have a fantastic day. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.